Hello Aries and welcome to your December 2019 reading. This is for Aries Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. We're at the end of a decade, the end of the year, and 2020 is going to be bringing in a lot. Um, Aries, 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 wow. Things feel, I don't know, like they're in a good state of flux right now. I feel that we're really focused towards work, towards careers, and we have been even for like the past seven or so years now with Uranus being in our sign, even now that it's into Taurus, it's still about money. It's still about, it's still about changes in those areas. So feeling a lot of that um, in terms of the astrology, we got a lot of big stuff happening. Um, Jupiter is moving into Capricorn. And it's going to be there for the next year. There's also a lot of other signs in Capricorn right now, which all has to do with your 10th house. So we're going to talk about the astrology, then we're going to get into the tarot part of the reading here. Um, and if you guys haven't, do make sure to subscribe. If you haven't checked out your other monthly reads, do check those out as well. If you enjoyed the video, definitely, sub um, again, subscribe and share it. And... If you want to book a private reading or get in touch for any other reason, all that information is right below this video in the description box. So Aries, um, we're using the Hobbit deck here. I'm going to shuffle it and we're going to talk a little bit about the astrology. December 3rd, we have Jupiter moving into Capricorn, your 10th house. Um, so a lot of questioning about, you know, where is your place in this world? What is your purpose? What are you bringing to the world and how can you bring more? Um, there's a lot of, you know, what's my destiny? Um, it's really good for making direction changes in our career as well. So it's all really coming to a head in those areas. Um, December 10th, we have Mercury moving into Sagittarius, your ninth house of travel. Um, so maybe you'll be planning some new trips, teaching, um, you might be publishing some work here, getting your word out to the world. December 11th, 12th, we have the full moon lunar eclipse in Gemini, which is in your third house. So it's going to be all about, you know, how you're thinking about things, about your mind. You might be thinking differently and manifesting a new world here just by kind of changing our mindset and working towards um, <clears throat> new beginnings here. December 20th, 21st, we have Venus moving into Aquarius in your 11th house um, of social groups, communities, um, friends. You could be, you know, really trying to find your tribe, trying to find your friend group. You could even be making new friends, coming into new friendship kind of communities, um, new kind of, um, again, family or, you know, work type of communities that could become more. December 22nd, we have the sun moving into Capricorn, also in your 10th house. In December 26th, we have a new moon solar eclipse in Capricorn, the third and the final one of 2019. Um, in your 10th house again. So there's a lot of 10th house energy right around the end of the month. So you're going to be really trying to build your self-confidence, your self-esteem, um, sharing really what, um, whatever it is you want. You want to share yourself to the world. You want to figure out how you fit into the world and what you bring to it and how you can bring more. Um, also, I would say, you know, there's a lot of great energy in terms of making, of, you know, solidifying hobbies into career, solidifying hobbies into money. Um, you know, again, just finding a way to love what you do in terms of career and vocation that's a huge focus of yours and it has been for a while a lot of you have become like self-employed business people um created your own businesses all this kind of stuff which has been really interesting to see so now let's continue on with the tarot here let's look at your energy this month what is aries sun moon rising and venus what is your energy this month aries This one has been around, I would say, since Scorpio season, and because, maybe it's because we still have um, Mercury in Scorpio until the 10th, that our energy there is still two of swords. Making a decision, sitting on a fence, we have a decision here that we need to come to, and I think a lot of you guys are very aware of what that is, but let's look at what that's about. So your energy is, I mean, two of swords, wow. We're making decisions. Ooh. you will be able to make a decision this oh my god <laughs> i put the deck down and then accidentally knocked over a bunch of cards um so yeah 
that's what this is about. Your energy this month is about coming to a decision, about realizing, you know, what we're going to do here. So if you've been kind of sitting at a crossroads, if you've been torn between two paths, especially in terms of work, career, vocation, what you want to do, what you want to bring to the world, you have some decisions to make there and you will be able to figure it out this month. You will find some clarity about a decision, about something that we felt neither here nor there about and haven't really been comfortable making a decision, you know? <clears throat> You might not be able to have faith in any one direction up until this point, And that might be what is throwing you off. You know, you haven't been able to have faith in maybe a side hustle or a hobby. And you definitely have been able to find faith or success in a career situation. For a lot of you, I think that's what the situation here is. Let's look at your major focus and goals this month. Your major focus this month, your goals for Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Oh my gosh. I feel like there's one more. Got your goals, your focus. Okay. Um, <laughs> Seven of Cups and the Ace of Wands. You're determining where your passion lies, where your energy lies, where your i mean whatever it is you have to bring your ace of wands is such a fiery wonderful energy here sorry i don't want this to fall i keep knocking over decks here but it just feels you know before i even get into this i want to go through your week by week and then we're going to look at this a little bit more sorry to cut that off so abruptly like that but i just feel like we got to look at some other things to look at here we're going to do week by weeks with the Egyptian tarot. <clears throat> wow. I have to say pretty good so far. Uh, yeah, if you've been trying to figure out some career situations, this is the month where things finally, finally start working out the way you want them to. Wow. Oh, this feels good, guys. Because I know, because I read for a lot of you guys, that things have been really difficult, that they've been really, really tough. Um, but the first card out here is the Chariot of Osiris. And the Chariot of Osiris in this deck, what is this? This is... It's supposed to be Leo. I don't think so. I don't think it's supposed to be anything, actually. Um, or is it? I don't know. I thought it was supposed to be Gemini, actually. It is Gemini. Okay, I was like, I couldn't tell what that little sign was there. That's Gemini. Okay, this is the, in the Egyptian deck. This is the sign of Gemini, actually, in this deck here. So... When you kind of get that, there is triumph, there's there's success, it feels like you're finally moving into it. It's kind of like the chariot, but it feels a lot more successful, a lot more in unison. You're moving forward in the right direction because I think you have been exploring which way to go and what to do, and maybe you haven't had the direction you've been looking for. But, and don't worry, we're going to figure out how it is that this all comes together because I feel like you guys have been like, how the hell is this all going to come together? Like, it doesn't feel like it's coming together here and yet here it is because the next card that you get is the cubic stone and the cubic stone here is actually usually the empress it's usually it has to do with you but in this deck it doesn't have anything to do with anybody however i'm still kind of going to take this as a note of your energy kind of growing here getting into that emperor position and when your card no matter what deck no matter how it is shows up when the emperor shows up in a reading and the cubic stone is supposed to be that emperor energy it's just you know it, it's that really strong it's that really you know strengthened position here you've realized your goals you've accomplished something there is results that you have created through enduring probably a lot you've showed the world you know this is my power i'm not giving up and it's being given right back to you you're getting something better you're raising your vibration you're becoming that emperor i mean you have the chariot the cubic stone your next card here is the six of pentacles that's you know an equal you know 
getting the money back if you've been putting an effort into something if you have not seen tangible results money um especially or material results from your hard work you're going to be getting it especially if you ask for it um and if you do need some help i would say ask for it however it just feels like you're so strong this month like something is clicking here it just feels like there is a click like magnets coming together like that they you know you've been trying to get there trying to get there and then all of a sudden it's like shoop, there it goes there it is because after that your last week the magus and that's the you know um all signs all planets type of energy he uses all of that energy that he's got you know swords fire no air sorry air fire water earth he's got it all he has everything he needs to create something there is you have to do something with your creative will and i just feel like there's a lot of mysterious happenings going on in the formation of whichever direction it is that you're going to be going in. And I know that sounds really confusing and don't worry, we're about to look deeper into it. But it just feels like this is like there's a catalyst, there's something that clicks this month. And it's like you've had all this like, oh, I'm looking around, you've been in the Seven of Cups energy and haven't been able to find that fire. And it's like something comes through, something clicks, something works out. And don't worry, we're going to look at it. But it's just like, uh, there's just so much beautiful inspirational new amazing adventure that just i mean i love this your goals your focus this month is you know what can you achieve you can create afresh because you're no longer limited by your past what deck do i want to use what deck do we want to use to look at this more um actually Let's look. <coughs> you guys didn't want to hear that because I just started choking. Excuse me, guys. <coughs> We're going to look at your defining events and obstacles. I know you don't want to hear this. For some reason, you don't. Too bad. We're using a completely different deck, the Morgan Greer, to look at your obstacles, to look at your challenges this month. And you're defining events. Don't you dare try to choke me out of her telling you the truth here. I don't think you guys want to know about some type of event, some type of defining event or obstacle you have to overcome to get there. But you know what? I have to say, guys, this is good. What are your def what are your defining events, your obstacles? What are your obstacles this month? Oh my god. Your obstacle is to see a situation, a work situation, a hobby, or again, um, it feels like your feelings tied to work in a different way. Maybe you have to look at starting something new from a different perspective. It might have seemed, you know, impossible or something that you couldn't do, something you didn't want to do. But it's like you're looking at maybe even a hobby, something that you just enjoy. Sorry, there's like a hair that getting stuck on my face here um and it's super annoying <laughs> but it just feels like you're seeing a hobby an opportunity something you enjoy doing from a different perspective or again a new beginning in money you're seeing something new and it's very successful because look what came up first here with six of wands your defining event is your success and showing the world that you have made it you, you've earned this you get to kind of walk the catwalk here and show everybody you know what you got <laughs> it's like oh did you think i wasn't going to be on my come up here i am and you are in the midst of change the two of pentacles on its most simple level is you know i, I think um the hermetic tarot calls it this the lord of harmonious change there is change here and it is positive you have to kind of figure out you know there's a sense of juggling and there always is when the seven of cups is there because we have to kind of determine juggle these cups here figure out you know where our emotions lie what do we enjoy doing what kind of you know what do you love to do and what kind of effect does it have on the world? What can it bring to the world around you? You're asking yourself these questions. Who do you want to be? What do you want to be known for? What kind of mark do you want to leave? And it's not always an easy question. For some of you, it's fame. And you're stepping in. Maybe that's what you've been trying to covet. Maybe that's what, you know, you've been trying to become a household name. I don't know. I'm not, I don't even mean fame in like the traditional sense. It could be fame in other kinds of senses. You know, you want to be known for the work that you do for bringing something good to the world even if it's in a small way 
But again, for some of you, it is more of a sense of fame. You know, what can you bring to the world? And I feel that you are in the center of all this. You are in control. So let's kind of see now what... Um, oh my god, I'm sorry. I was like, what happened to one of these cards here? It was just behind a different card. Because everything gets really messy on the tarot deck. Let's pull... Um, a little bit more on the week to week stuff. But this all has to do with your challenges and how this month plays out. Chariot of Osiris. We have choices in the beginning of the month here. Um, which way, you know, in this first week, it's kind of like, which way are you going to go? Which way, you know, which choice here? Because the Chariot of Osiris is about, you know, it does have that Chariot energy, but it is also Gemini, which talks about choices. Yes, there is success here, and you have been making the right choices, so continue to make them. Continue to explore new options. You will have a new opportunity to ride into the future here. It feels like something so brand new, something so, you know, again, just beautiful. And, you know, it's just a sense of adventure, you know, um... That you're just not limited by the past. Sorry, I was waiting for that one to pop out or to, to flip itself out. And there we go. The Slave of the Pentacle, which is the same as the Page of Pentacles. It has to do... It literally looks like you have something to give to the world here in the first week. And it's kind of coming to you. You've been burdened down by other things. And this is like, once you let go of that and you allow this to happen, you allow this money to come in, this idea, this download, it's like you get it. There is some type of like gift here. I don't know. I want to see how it comes in and we're going to ask some other questions, but I really like that because it feels like you've been enslaved to what you've been doing in the past and it hasn't been working out. And that's why this new opportunity is coming in. You've been looking for something. You've been looking for that new direction. What is going to fit? Who am I now? And what am I doing? Like I want it to be big, but I'm been stuck where I am. Yeah. And it's like you hear from somebody, you look at something here. Wow. The Master of the Sword and the Ten of Cups. For some of you, it's again that new job offer, that raise, that, you know, yes, you deserve this. You're going to get this. A decision made in your favor that is bringing you all that emotional happiness. I do. It does feel like, you know, decisions are in your favor this month. Again, especially if we have a big boss, you know, we work for a huge company or we've been applying to kind of a very well-known dream company dream situation here that is extremely well established it feels very good when you get the um the cubic stone you know who is kind of the emperor and the master of sword that's really good that's somebody making a decision to give you your dreams here to offer you something here your your work and what you have been bringing to the table has gotten you recognized and again if it's kind of like you get like a pull to apply somewhere to reach out to somebody if you've been looking for a job or looking for a situation in that first week do it because that person is coming back to you that situation comes back and you will get that offer things will work out here Oof. the warrior of the cup he always has something wonderful to offer He's kind of that dreamy offer guy. He's also all about romance. We have a lot of love and romance coming in this month as well. It seems like there's a lot of balance there as other things balance out in our lives. Love and romance and our general emotional satisfaction and fulfillment really even out. And we're willing to, you know, um, make some compromises, offer people money, pay off things that needed to be paid off. Um, it's just good. I feel that this is very good. In the last week of the year, the Magus brings in the Balance and the Sword, which is the Cancerian card, interestingly enough. But it's kind of like somewhere in between Strength and um, Justice, which is super interesting. Um, it's really, really interesting. It, it talks about, you know, again, your moral debts. Where you need to separate yourself from, from energy that has been holding you back. Um, what you've needed to change. And you're doing that this month. You know, don't be afraid to make the decisions that you need to make here. It also feels like offers, things you can sign. But, um, again, this just all feels very good. Let's get some... <sighs> what do we want to ask about here? Just a little bit more on how we go from the Seven of Cups to the Ace of Wands. 
in this whole situation. <laughs> the lovers. Gemini full moon. Just because it keeps coming up is like lovers energy, Gemini energy. I feel that like that might be a really great time for you. That full moon lunar eclipse in Gemini is going to be good. If you can think differently, if you can view things from a different perspective at that point, you can create a lot of prosperity, a lot of money. You can really make things, you can really manifest a brand new world for yourself here. And that's really what this is all saying is it's just, it's if you choose something different, if you choose to even look at something differently, change your mindset, let go of a negative mindset, let go of, you know, the confusion and just kind of going with your gut here. It feels, yeah, and there it is, success. Six of Wands a second time. You have success this month. You are going to overcome that hump. It's. I know it's been a lot of fives. It's been that two of swords. What do we do? How do I overcome this? I'm going through internal wars and I don't know what to do. But everything comes out the other side, like sunshine and roses here. Six of Wands is just so much success, so much just really, really good energy here, especially in terms of... Um, getting what you want showing the world you know i've done this it's victory being the center of attention feeling like you've accomplished something huge it's beautiful so things are going to be okay and they do seem very good but you have some juggling to do you have some decisions to make and let's get a couple cards of advice advice in terms of that Love readings will be in separate videos, I believe, just because I feel that yours is not so much a love reading as well. This feels a lot more career, life path focused for you. Wow, okay. Yeah, we're going to have to do some love readings because they're looking like crazy this month. <laughs> Your three cards of advice are all about choices. And like, I don't know how to tell you this without showing it to you. So I'm just going to show you. But like one, two, three, two of swords, two of cups, and then the lovers. It's about the choices you make in terms of love, in terms of mindset, in terms of life path and direction. You're going to have to follow your heart here. And even if you don't know the outcome, and that can be more uncomfortable now that we have Jupiter moving into Capricorn where we need that tangible results. We need to see the concrete results to know where we're going. Um, you have to make decisions. And Aries, you're one sign... That if you go with your gut, you will be fine in making decisions. Other signs have a really hard time. I would say like, you know, for example, Pisces, the sign that comes before you. Um, or, you know, the last sign of the Zodiac. They have the hardest time making decisions. They cannot make decisions. I love Pisces. But for them to go one way or the other can sometimes take years. And they have very they're very interesting in that sense. Um, we're not going to get too far into that, but you guys are able to make decisions and that's what keeps you going, going, going in life. That's why you're the first out. You make that decision to keep running. You're like, you know what? I don't know where this goes, but if I don't try something, I'm just going to stand here and I'm not into that. That's not my energy. That's not my style. I'm a thinker, doer, creator, no matter if it goes 100% great or 100% bad. Um, so trailblaze, follow your gut and trailblaze. You'll know in your intuition, if you look into your own feelings, you will be able to find which of these is the answer. Because the way that this looks on the table, um, I'm going to try to see if I can hold this all backwards. So that you guys can look at it the way I can see it. But she's looking at it like this, like she's looking at all these decisions. And once you look into that cup, which is your own feelings, your intuition, you give your intuition a nod there and say, okay, I'm going to listen to you. All these decisions seem a lot more... Like you can make them. You're easily able to make some decisions here. Overcome them with ease. When you start listening to how you feel towards them. When you start looking at where things haven't progressed. And if they're going to not progress to the future. Why decide to keep going. You know keep walking that path. Six of cups. 
This might involve love situations. It might involve exes. But for me, I think that this is bringing up some choice. You know, this Two of Swords situation has been by, by again. You know, it has come up probably every single time we've had a Capricorn eclipse this year, you know, in early 2019, in January, in July, and now. So what have we learned and what will we do now on this third try, on this third time when this stuff comes up here? This 10th house stuff of who am I? What do I want to bring to the world? Um, what's my destiny? How am I, you know, um, thinking about things? What am I manifesting through my thoughts? It's going to become very clear that you need to change that towards success, towards that sun energy. Things will come out in a very clear, great way when you decide to listen and look at your feelings, look at things in a different way. Again, the hangman is what comes up here in your obstacles, needing to look at things from a different perspective to understand what doesn't serve us anymore, to make the necessary harmonious change, to drop one of those pentacles. There's a lot of twos here, and there's a lot of, again, cards that talk about duality. I mean, we have the chariot, the lovers, the two of cups, the two of swords. Um, am I missing anybody? Uh, six of cups, six of pentacles, the sun. There's a lot of revelation, decisions, big stuff coming in here. So trust your gut. That's what keeps coming up here is it's in your feelings. You will know if you follow your feelings. The six of wands won't be hard to find. The right decisions won't be hard to make. But you have to incorporate your emotional, your emotions into these decisions, into, you know, which way do I go? And you have to trust and you're like, you know, like you are being, you know, an Aries that <clears throat> it's all going to be okay in the end. And you can't really think too hard about, you know, solid stable outcomes that you can see right now you're gonna have to put a little trust and faith into this all right Woo, aries let's pull some romance angel oracle cards from the dorian virtue deck here aries sun moon rising and venus Ooh, children your love life is being affected by children come on give me one Ooh, wedding. You're, the situation involves marriage. For some of you, somebody might be asking you to marry them. They might be committing to, wanting to commit to you in a serious way. And I have to say, um, locking down an Aries, nobody really talks about that. But sometimes that's really hard to do, um, especially for you Aries Venuses. Um, it's letting go of... You need to tune into, actually not letting go, more like you need to tune into your inner child because this situation involves marriage and you, ooh, that just gave me such a weird feeling. Yeah, you need to tune into your inner child. It's trying to show you something about a relationship situation. Maybe you're not ready for it to be, get more serious and all this Capricorn energy being thrown at you is kind of freaking you out. Um, and that might be why this decision is so difficult. When you start looking at your feelings, maybe how you really feel about this person, and if you want to lose them or not, if you want to lose the situation or not, you might actually find that you're ready to commit. The situation does involve marriage, though. Maybe you're going to a wedding. Maybe this involves your wedding, the person you're married to, or somebody who you think you can marry. But when wedding shows up, there is a seriousness involved. Some of you might meet somebody and you're like, I know that this is my person. <laughs> And maybe that's why there's a kind of a long haul kind of thing going on here. But let's see. Stacey DeMarco, Halloween, Oracle, messages for Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Advice. Ooh. Heart. Happiness in our hearts and homes. Messages of guidance for Aries for this month. What's this that wants to come out here? Jack-o'-lantern protection. I don't want to pull all these cards right now. I have too many cards, guys. <laughs> All right, first card out here is Hearth. Should the Hearth card appear in your divination, you are being asked to look to what your idea of home and family is for you. Take the time to build up your love fire and have it burning brightly. Make your relationships a priority. If there is conflict within your home and family, it is time to take concrete steps to address the issue for good. If you are a member of your family is away from home due to travel or work, know that protection is being given. 
All right, jack-o'-lantern protection. Know that you are protected and that you are capable of creating the life that you want and that the universe supports you in this should jack shine his light upon you. Boundaries are important to teach people how to treat us and drawing this card indicates that you may wish to renew the ones you have or to establish new ones. New boundaries. I think that might be the name of this whole reading for you is new boundaries. New choices, new boundaries. Because the boundaries are only there if you put them there. And for some people in relationships, yeah, you need to. But that's, it's almost like there's such an expanse, there's an expanding of your boundaries. An expanding, an expansion in terms of what you thought was possible if you're willing to expand your own boundaries further. Um, in terms of leveling up a relationship, leveling up a commitment, even in terms of work, going a different direction in terms of it as well. Wow. Big messages, Aries. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you in the other uh, December 2019 readings and I will see you in 2021 as well. Oh, sorry, 2020. Skipping a whole year there. 2020 as well because I'm going to do the 2020 readings soon as well. Keep an eye out for your love readings too. Um, if you want to book a private reading, all that info is below this video in the description box. Make sure to subscribe if you enjoyed the video. I always appreciate if you share it. Um, and I really do appreciate that, guys. If you haven't, do make sure to subscribe. Hit that wiggly bell and it'll notify you whenever I'm live or posting up a video. It's, I've been doing a lot of interesting live stuff lately. Um, if you do live in the Tampa area, do check out this awesome store called um, Dysfunctional Grace over in Ebor. I love this. So shout out to um, the lovely woman who owns it. She's so cool. And that store is so interesting and incredible. Please go check it out. It's very interesting. It has a lot of curiosities. Um, anyways, guys, have a wonderful and blessed December and end of the decade. Namaste, Aries.